The board needs to be congratulated on the manner in which it's taken to the task that uh, the president assigned it in its first instance, uh, who was then, of course, the deputy president of the country, which was, as uh, the State of the Nation address said, we need to, uh, in a sense, recapture institutions like ESCOM, ensure that they are well governed by a board that has the appropriate balance and levels of skills and expertise and the patriotism that is actually required to ensure that big institutions like ESCOM serve the public interest and not the personal interest as has been the case over the last few years, whether it is the personal interest of members of the board uh, previously or members of uh, management uh, previously as well. And uh, Mr. Mabuza and his team have done extremely well to uh, create the right level of confidence that good governance is beginning to embed itself in the organization, that they understand their fiduciary responsibilities uh, and will continue to embed those within the organization as well. Thirdly, get enough credibility in the marketplace uh, so that ESCOM is once again able to borrow and have the levels of liquidity with which both the chief executive and the chairperson spoke about to keep the operations of this organization going. Uh, and soon they will begin to also look at the business model that ESCOM works with so that we are assured that that which constitutes what we today call the ESCOM group is what ESCOM requires in the next 10 or 15 years. And uh, whether all of those elements need to be the focus of their work or whether there are changes that need to be made. And before that is misunderstood, we are not talking about privatizing ESCOM, or we're not talking about selling off ESCOM to anyone, because that's the next uh, bit of uh, uh, ripples that will begin to emerge if I leave what I have just said on, in its own right. There, there is, of course, uh, a lot more work to do in two respects, or maybe three. <coughs> the first is to understand even further exactly what kind of damage did state capture do to this institution and how deep is that damage. The second is to ensure that over and above the six individuals that might have left the organization, who else was part of this malfeasance that went on in this organization? And how do we hold them accountable uh, for what has gone on? Whether they are in the organization or whether they have left the organization is actually irrelevant. Uh, if you've stolen public money, we hope that one day very, very soon, the law enforcement agencies will be able to exercise their muscles in the appropriate manner so that those who have been guilty of bringing organizations like this <coughs> into disrepute uh, and also breaking down its governance system will be ultimately held accountable. Uh, and that means also looking at the various forensic reports that might be available or might be necessary uh, as we go forward. The second element is uh, to ensure that we begin to instill the right ethical values and integrity uh, in, in the management layers and in the staff of, of ESCOM. And in this regard, the, the board, and perhaps they should tell you more about it uh, in the next few minutes, has initiated a process of lifestyle audits. So perhaps they, we need to tell the public what are these lifestyle audits, uh, they've already started uh, and how, how far have they actually gone and when can we expect both as government but also as parliament and indeed the public a report which says we've done X number of people, Y is the findings that we actually have and a lifestyle audit essentially says if I earn X amount is my lifestyle and the assets that I've accumulated in my name or in the name of my family commensurate with the earnings that I've actually had. And if what I own or have is 10 times more than what I earn, uh, then there must be a logical explanation. And if there isn't a logical explanation, uh, then of course further investigations would, would in fact be required as well. And the third element, as I pointed out earlier, is how, we, how they constantly reposition ESCOM uh, in an environment where the energy terrain globally uh, is undergoing constant change. 
both in a technological sense but also in a technical sense. Uh, again, whether it's the generation part or the transmission part or the distribution part, uh, each of those have new dynamics entering the, the, the domain in one form or another, together with the kind of demands that climate change makes as well. Each of those, of course, uh, changes uh, also introduce concerns amongst our own people in our society as well. And one of the prime concerns is in communities where power stations exist and which power stations supply jobs, uh, sometimes in the thousands, what happens to people in those communities uh, if the power stations uh, begin to decline or pass their usable age? And those are some of the issues that the board will be looking at as well. But far more importantly is the kind of uh, agility that's going to be required in order to constantly ensure that ESCOM is able to meet the demands of the day, not only in the sense of supplying electricity, but keeping it an, an agile, transparent, and viable and sustainable organization that will serve many generations of South Africans way beyond today.